Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I wanted to post a quick video about how to determine if you got a bad battery or if you have a bad alternator. I'm starting to see more and more questions about that come up. So let's get started. Usually the first indication that you got an issue is when you come to your car and maybe unlock the door. Sometimes if your battery's dead, your door won't unlock the rest of the doors or something like that will happen. That was a common thing I had with my old 740 Volvo. But other than that, most of the time you'll know when you go to start the car. You turn the car to start it up. You see a couple lights light up and you turn the key. Nothing happens. If nothing happens, you more than likely have a dead battery and or a starter issue. So this is how you can tell usually if you have a dead battery. Now, it's real common for people to think that something other than the battery is defective all because they have other things working. Like their lights will work, so they think their battery's fine. Well, your lights might work at a lower voltage then your uh, starter will work. Let's say, for instance, a battery is supposed to have between 12.4 and 14 volts. Well, your starter might need 9 volts before it'll kick in and try to start. Anything under 9 volts, it'll fall off and not let the starter work. Anything above 9 volts, the starter will kick in and try to start the car. Even though it's slow cranking or low, it may still turn the starter. Now, your headlights might work at 6 volts. So, all because your headlights work, don't mean that your battery's good enough to start your, your starter. Okay, if you're having issues with your car starting, the first thing you want to do is check your connectors. Your positive and your negative. On the positive side, there's a plus. That plus is right there. On the ground side, there's a negative. That minus is right there. So you need to understand the difference. But with these newer cars, sometimes you can't see the corrosion that builds up behind the connector. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your connectors are tight. I've seen a lady jump in her car over and over again every day. I finally, uh, the second or third day I went over and asked her what the problem was. She said she had a new battery. She was still having a problem with the car starting. I grabbed the battery terminal and the connector was loose. So you want to make sure neither one of your connectors move when you grab them and try to twist them with force. If they do, you don't have a good uh, connection at your battery and you're going to have issues with your battery not giving proper juice or proper ground to what it needs to get started. So make sure your battery connections are tight. Now, if you have an inexpensive voltmeter, you can plug your voltmeter leads into the battery like that to test it. Then you get your gauge and you hook it up and you put it over to where you would test for battery volts. On this one, it's uh, this 0.50 volts on the battery side. Now, mine is indicating that it's above the red and not quite in the green. If you have a battery tester like this or a voltmeter or ohm meter, you can set it, make sure you got it at a setting where you're reading different voltage, and then have somebody try to start the car. When they try to start the car, you want to watch the voltmeter to see if it drops down into the red. If it drops down to the red, your batteries probably have a bad cell or two in it that's stopping it from starting the car. Okay, I'm about to show you the voltage on my current battery. When my car is sitting idle, it's at 12 volts, 11.8 volts. Now, when I go to start it, you'll see those volts drop for a second and then go back up once the car started. As you can see, this meter allowed you to watch my battery volts drop from 11.8 to 8.4 volts while it was starting and then 
it jumped back up to what you see now, this 13.6 or 13.5, which indicates that the alternator is charging the battery. So I have a little bit of a weak battery, but my alternator is good. And you can get these type of, of gauges to help you do troubleshooting at your auto parts store, or you may be able to borrow one. But this is a simple OBD2 tool called a scan gauge. Now, one thing you need to know is newer cars, I would say cars maybe 1985 and newer, they have computers and, and stereos and other things that constantly draw power from the battery. So if you have a car that you're not driving uh, often, maybe once a week, once every two weeks, this battery can be having a slight draw on it that can cause it to be drained down and go dead. There's one car that I've been working on for somebody. I have changed four batteries in the car in six months because they let the car sit three or four weeks at a time and it's draining the battery down and it's actually destroying the battery. Anytime a car drains the battery down till it's dead and continues to try to draw from that uh, battery, these newer batteries will normally start destroying the cells inside. So if you got a car that you're not driving, one thing you may want to do is disconnect the negative battery post. Not the positive one, the negative post. Disconnect it so that the car isn't draining the battery down. Now, one thing you should know is, if your battery is drained down too far, or it has bad cells, you may not be able to jump start it and keep it going. As you can see, this battery has six cells. It appears six of these things on top of it. And if two or three or four of those cells are bad, you may get a good reading on your voltmeter that it's got good voltage, but as soon as you put a load on it, like trying to start it, it'll drop off tremendously because each time that you have a bad cell, you have less cold cranking amps. This car battery has 600 cold, crank cold cranking amps. And if half of the cells are bad, it may have 12 volts on those good cells, but it has 300 cranking amps, which is not enough to start the car. So you got to keep in mind that if you got good voltage, it may not be good under a load. So you could take this battery to a auto parts store and they'll test it and let you know if it's good or bad. Now, alternators do not go bad that often. And down there, you see my alternator. Alternators are typically more expensive than batteries and they last a lot longer than batteries. Normally an alternator will last a couple hundred thousand miles in the car. Now, the first clue that you have that the battery is bad and not the alternator is if you jump the car after the battery's been dead and you can drive the car around, that indicates that the alternator is good to some degree and it is now charging the battery and giving power to the car so the car can drive. If your alternator was dead or very bad, you couldn't jump start the car and then drive 5 or 10 or 20 miles. Uh, typically, an alternator will not do that unless it's doing something bad to the battery like overcharging or undercharging, which is very rare. Normally, it's a, it's a give or go thing. So if you're able to jump the car and drive it, you likely have a bad battery, even if the battery is a month or two old. Another indication that you have a bad battery versus an alternator is if you're driving the car and you have none of these warning lights lit in your dash, you normally have a situation where your battery's bad. Normally, you'll get a battery light and maybe two or three other lights will light up indicating that you have a problem with your charging system. So you may want to look in your owner's manual and read the warning signs in your owner's manual that lets you know if your alternator or charging system is bad. 
If your battery's bad, you might get a battery light, uh, but more than likely, you will not get a battery light. You'll get a charging system light if your alternator is bad. Okay, just to recap, if you try to start the car, your battery starts your car, not your alternator. So, if you're having problems starting your car, your battery's weak for one reason or another. Maybe you're not driving the car enough. You typically need to drive the car on a daily basis or at least once a week for an hour or at least a half hour to charge the battery up. If you typically take short trips of 10 minutes or less to work, or from work, you can wear a battery down in 60 or 90 days. That vehicle needs to be run at some point during the week for at least 30 minutes to give that battery a good charge. Now, if you are having problems starting, your battery's weak. If you jump the car off and you're able to drive somewhere, you more than likely have a battery issue. If you jump the car off and it, and it dies, uh, five or ten minutes after you get the car started, then you may have an alternator problem. I recently had an alternator problem, and I was driving around the community fine. I got to where I was on my way home. I was about five miles from home, and all of a sudden, I seen these lights light up across my dash. Well, my car was still running. Immediately, I knew I had an alternator that had quit on me. So I cut down my lights, cut off my stereo and I was able to drive on the battery till I got home. By the time I got home my battery was so weak that things started shutting down on the car. The transmission quit shifting. Something else cut out and these things need a certain amount of volts and my battery voltage has dropped to about 7 volts. So uh, if your car starts to lose power and the battery dies while you're driving, you more than likely have an alternator issue. If your uh, car just fails to start, you more likely have a battery issue. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here, and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.